friends this is kushal from iser bhopal and in this video we are going to learn about reinforcement learning so as you might know machine learning essentially is known to consist of two different paradigms one is supervised learning and one is unsupervised learning supervised learning is essentially about learning the functional relationship between a set of input and a set of output data points so for example if you are given some data points you need to you know train your algorithm uh, of which ann or artificial neural networks are the most popular ones so you need to train these algorithms so that the functional relationship between the input and the output can be learned approximately and this has many many applications for example in handwriting recognition face detection speech recognition and many other uh, uh, you know real life applications then we have unsupervised learning where you do not have the output data points you only have the input data points for example in this graph that you see you have these you know points which are plotted on a 2d uh, plane and the objective of unsupervised learning is to find hidden patterns in these data points or to do classification without having explicit set of output data points so for example in this figure that you see we can clearly identify that the given data points can be classified in two different categories in this way you can see a green circle and a yellow circle on your screen so they help in differentiating the given data points into two different categories without there being a explicit output data point associated with either of them so these are the two most popular uh, you know paradigms of machine learning but one more paradigm or category which has become very popular in recent years is called reinforcement learning and this reinforcement learning is essentially about learning to perform action in a certain environment which is very similar to how biological systems evolve so you know for example if you take bacterial cell or even human beings we operate in a certain environment and we perform certain actions and now depending on the kind of rewards that we get by performing those actions we update our decision making process and that is the kind of uh, you know policy which reinforcement learning is trying to mimic of course reinforcement learning follows a fixed algorithm like any other computer program that is an important difference between uh, reinforcement learning and biological systems but at least it is closer to how biological systems evolve as compared to supervised learning or unsupervised learning so let's try to understand reinforcement learning through an example of tic tac toe which you might have played a lot during your childhood or maybe even now so this tic tac toe game that you see on your screen essentially consists of nine uh, uh, you know places on this square board and you need to populate these crosses uh, and you need to populate these nine places with crosses or circles so it's a, it's a two player game where one player chooses a cross and uh, another player chooses a circle and you fill this uh, one by one i hope you are familiar with this game so i don't need to explain the game to you so essentially this game consists of an environment which is the entire board consisting of nine places which the uh, agent interact with so here we are considering the cross to be our agent and the circle to be our opponent so the agent and the opponent are playing this game with each other and the objective of the agent is to learn to play the game well so that it can defeat the opponent as many times as possible then you have different states or configurations state means that different uh, you know combinations of crosses and zeros in this whole environment we will see more details of the state later on and in order to uh, you know change the state you need to perform an action so whenever a agent puts a cross in a particular uh, place or the opponent puts a zero in a particular place that is called action so agent performs action and as it performs action it learns how to perform this action better and better so initially the agent does not have any experience of the environment it performs action more or less randomly but as it evolves as time goes on the agent learns from this process and learns to perform action in a better way rather than just doing it randomly we'll see how exactly this learning process happens and in order to learn uh, 
to perform action better the agent needs to have a policy and the policy is essentially based on two things one is the reward which it gets from the environment and one is the value so reward and value are kind of related to each other but usually the reward is used for the last step of the game where the where you win or lose or you end up in a draw and value is the intrinsic value of each state or configuration meaning that the higher the value of a configuration the more likely it is to lead you to a win in the game so reward is meant for the last stage of the game where you win or lose so your reward is either positive or negative and value is the intrinsic value of each individual state which leads you to the final state and the value decides whether that particular state will lead you to a win at the end or will it lead you to lose at the end so the total number of states in this particular game as you can see is 3 power 9 uh, where does 3 come from because each single place in this board can either have a cross or it can have a circle or it can be a blank so there are 3 possibilities for each place and there are 9 places so you total have 3 power 9 number of places so not all of these places are valid places for various reasons but we will not get into those details for now for now just know that the total number of possible states in this game is 3 power 9 and out of these 3 power 9 possible states there are various states or configuration which lead you to a win as shown on the top of your slide there are uh, many states which lead you to lose which is in the middle of your uh, slide and there are many states which lead, lead you to a draw which is shown at the bottom of the slide so if a state leads you to a win we associate a value of plus one to that state and if a state leads you to a loss we attach a value of minus one to that state and if a state leads you to a draw then we attach a value of zero to that state so this is something that we can do a priori because we know exactly which states are winning, which states are losing and which states are ending up in a draw. So this is our initial uh, uh, you know, assessment or initial assignment of value that we have done to the winning, losing and draw states. Now the objective of reinforcement learning algorithm is to learn how to figure out the value for the intermediate state because we can very easily assign value to the final state because we know whether it's a win or a loss or a draw but assigning a value to an intermediate state is more challenging because there is no a priori reason which can help you in figuring out whether that state will lead you to a win or a loss so in order to learn the value of intrinsic states what we do is that we make this computer program play against itself and keep track of the states that it went through while it played the game. So now we let's say we take this particular state in which our uh, system was and now we need to make a move. So now the agent needs to make a move. So we assume that the agent was the one who started the game. So the cross came first, then a zero, then a cross, then a zero and now again it is the turn for the cross to play again so what the cross does or what the agent does is that it takes the value of the state at a particular uh, time instant t and then it takes the value of the state at the next time instant means the value of the state after it makes the next move and it updates the value of the current state by using the formula that you see on the top of your screen. So what you do is that you take a difference between the value of the next state and the current state, multiply that by a parameter alpha which can be called as the learning rate and add that to the value of your current state. So we'll see an example which will make it more clear. But the basic idea is that you take a current state you make a move and based on the value of the state which you went to the next state you update the value of the previous state 
So if you keep doing this process many many number of times, you would have learned a value of all the intermediate states which you have to go through before reaching a final state which can be a win or a lose, a loss or a draw. So for example, let's take that at the fourth step, let's say you were at this uh, stage where uh, uh, you know there were two crosses on the uh, board and two circles on the board and now it is your turn to make a move and so if you make a move like this, so this is a win state. The fifth uh, uh, you know, state in your particular game is a win state and as we have seen earlier, the value of a win state has been assigned to be 1. So initially, we assume the value of all the intermediate states to be 0. So that's why Vs4 is 0 initially. After maybe making one, after making one move, its value, the value of the next state becomes 1. So by using the formula on top of your screen, we update the value of the fourth state so that it becomes 0 which was its previous value plus alpha times 1 minus 0. So 1 is the state of the next state. So 1 is the value of the next state and 0 is the value of the present state. So we have 0 plus alpha times 1 minus 0 which is equal to alpha. Now let's go one step back and let's see what was before S4. So let's say you were in this state where you know uh, the Vs3 was again 0 because we have assumed that all the intermediate states are 0 to begin with and the next uh, state is this which is our Vs4. So now earlier Vs4 was 0 but after making a move we updated Vs4 to alpha. So now using this updated value of Vs4 we can calculate the value of state S3. And how will we do that? Again by using the formula on top. So you have Vs3 equal to 0 which is its present value plus alpha times alpha minus 0 which is equal to alpha square. So using this process we can keep updating the values of each state till we have either reached a saturation value for all the states or we have played the game sufficient number of times. So if you make a computer play against another computer enough number of times you would have learned the value of every single intermediate state which you have to cross before reaching your win state or loss state or draw state. So now here comes an important uh, uh, you know, choice that you have to make between exploration and exploitation. So what this means is that when you are learning the game, then when you are making the next uh, step or when you are going to the next state, you need to make a choice of whether you want to go to the state which has the highest value or do you want to make a choice randomly. So if you make a choice randomly that is called exploration but if you make a choice based on the state which has highest value that is called exploitation. So the danger with too much exploitation is that you may be stuck with a path which may lead you to a win but that is not the most optimum path and you may actually lose the game if you play against a more intelligent opponent. The danger with exploration is that you know you may keep uh, you know going around in circles and never really be able to figure out which is the best path to follow. So in order to optimize the learning process in order to learn these weights uh, in order to learn these values in the best possible way you need to strike a balance between exploration and exploitation. So for example, you can say that 70% of the time you will do exploitation and 30% of the times you will do exploration. So this can be a strategy which you use, but there has to be some balance between exploitation and exploration. You cannot just do one of them and exclude the other. This is a very, very important concept which has to be incorporated in your reinforcement learning algorithm. So reinforcement learning is essentially about an interaction between the agent and the environment in this fashion that the agent performs an action which makes some changes in the environment and based on that the environment gives a reward to the agent. It can be a reward or it can be a punishment also. So reward takes into account both positive and negative rewards. So if the reward is positive that reinforces that particular action and if the award is negative, that tends to prevent the agent from performing that same action again. So this process goes on for over many, many cycles 
till the agent has learned to interact with the environment in a meaningful way and this is the essence of reinforcement learning and this reinforcement learning has many many applications the first of them was in chess or other kinds of board games so scientists started you know figuring out how computers can beat humans in a game of chess or recently scientists have also developed an algorithm which can defeat humans in the game of go which is considered to be much more complex than the game of chess so board games have been the conventional traditional forte of uh, people working on reinforcement learning and then there are these you know automations that happen in factory or various corporate settings so earlier you know uh, you know many decades back you know all the work in these big establishments used to happen manually or by use of mechanical uh, machines however because of reinforcement learning lot of automation has started uh, coming in which is revolutionizing the way we manufacture various kinds of products then of course we had the advent of robotics and humanoids which which tend to mimic lot of human behavior and you know there are people who even claim that you know few decades down the line robots will be able to mimic almost every single human function that you know humans are able to do and the latest in this line of uh, applications of reinforcement learning is these driverless cars so you know we know that you know uh, driving causes lot of accidents and lot of other issues so there's a lot of research that is going on in developing driverless cars which means that this machine learning algorithm will be able to drive a car on its own without needing any human intervention so here also reinforcement learning plays a very important role that the car driving on the road is kind of performing action and based on what happens you know whether you reach an accident or whether you collide with something the car changes its algorithm based on the positive or negative rewards that it gets from the environment so this is also a very important application of machine learning so this is the essence of reinforcement learning and of course this has many many more applications which you can read about on the web thank you